let me say a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. What I'm going to share with you the, this evening comes out of my own experience and my own, my own ignorance and my own desire to try to make sense out of suffering in my own life. I was raised Catholic, but I ended up leaving the Catholic Church and I became a Protestant pastor. And my background as a Protestant pastor didn't give me a lot of answers to the meaning of suffering. We would read commentaries and we'd come to the points where it talked about suffering. And to be honest with you, I didn't get a lot of really good answers. And it wasn't until I came back into the Catholic Church that I started to realize that suffering had tremendous value. I can remember listening to some Catholics talking about wanting, or not wanting, but to desire to embrace their suffering in their life and thinking that they were a little bit off something a little bit different about these Catholics, particularly those who started thanking God for the suffering in their life. But after coming back to the Catholic Church, something happened to me that really forced me to face this issue of suffering. And then later, studying the book of Revelation, which we're going to take a look at here, opening and ending with that, it just deepened. What happened to me was I ended up with a, a pretty bad neck injury. And that neck injury split my C6-7 in my neck. And I wound up in a tremendous amount of pain for about nine months. And through a series of doctor visits, I ended up, and I'm not going to tell the whole story, but I ended up in emergency surgery where my neck was fused. And they took a bone from my hip and they put it in my neck, put that, that part of my neck out, put the bone in, fused it, put titanium plates in, screwed it all together, totally wrecked my whole day but it brought some relief. But it was in the middle of that that I had a choice to make. I had a choice as to whether I was going to try to understand this teaching of redemptive suffering or whether I was just going to put up with the suffering. And what I have found in my life, and I'm sure that some of you would agree, is that when we approach the Lord in our Christian life, we have this, this idea of what our, our life should be, and that we have this sense of the ideal life. I know I do, and that ideal life is where I am comfortable. Uh, life is predictable. It's what interests me. It's what I'm gifted at. I'm affirmed in this area. I am pain-free. I have a sense of accomplishment, and my basic needs are met. But the problem with living my life thinking that that's what I'm going to get every day is this ideal life. The only problem is, is that I have to wake up in the morning and real life hits me in the face. And when real life hits you in the face, you are, you are faced with things that are uncomfortable, unpredictable. You're not particularly interested in that particular subject. It's not your gift. You're not involved it is, or not affirmed, and it involves pain in your life. And when that ideal life hits real life, we are faced with a decision. What are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with our lives when suffering enters our life? There's a number of options that we choose. One is that uh, we make others pay the price. I make my wife pay the price for my less than ideal day. If you would have only scheduled it and put it on the Google Calendar, then I wouldn't be faced with this. So we blame other people. We run. We medicate. We get lost in the Internet. We have a lot of ways of dealing with this. And what happens so often is that when we take a step back and we look at our lives, we realize that I have only really embraced about 30% of my life, or 40%, or 45%, and that 45, 50% of our life is simply putting up with life. And we seem to always be waiting for it. When the, when the stars align and everything comes together, that's when I'll really do what God called me to. That's when I can finally start that ministry. That's when I can 
really love my children. And I'd be able to really love my children and really love my wife if it wasn't for all these problems. And what I discovered in redemptive suffering, in the teachings of the church, and it's really come alive in the book of Revelation, is that God has given me the opportunity to live 100% of my life. As St. Paul said, he said, I have learned to live with a lot, and I've learned to live with a little. He said, I've learned the secret. How many of you want to know the secret? He said, I've learned the secret that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How many of you believe that means all things? Now, I looked this up in the Greek, and in the Greek it says, all things. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that means as a Catholic that not one bit of my life has to be wasted. That the good times, wonderful. But when difficulties come my way, I can live life and I can embrace it. And those difficult times provide me an opportunity to be a witness.